Welcome back. Time to build the furnace. I've conscripted some labor. Okay, this is what we're dealing with for internal size. It's not very big, but let's say I wanted to heat treat something this big. It fits. Kind of. I mean, it fits crooked. I did say I wanted to cut the end off of that, but you know how quickly I do things around here. I don't think it'll, no, it won't quite fit lengthwise, but it's, it fits. And it almost fits height, nope, not even almost. Not even close. But a more knife sized thing, like I could fit a bunch of those in there. Not going to, obviously, because of wood. Okay, so let's measure up the sides. I want to know, this dimension is obviously nine inches. Just kind of want to know general size, uh, depth, and then run my numbers against my plan. Make sure it works. Do the honors and measure in. Pretty much exactly 13 inches, maybe a 64th over. Okay. <laughs> and by nine. By nine, okay, I have nine by 12 on the plan. That's, uh, reason for that is the thickness of the outer bricks. Okay, yeah, half, half inch, inch on half way. inch on either way. Okay, so nine by 13. Pen does not work. Nine by 13 times two is... And, oh, that's nine. that's area. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't want area. I want nine plus thirteen times two. See, that's what that's why you get an engineer here. That See, there you go. Math, math is this guy. Work. I'm doing live experiment on camera and live struggling with a twisty tie on camera. Whoop. Okay, will it stretch? <clears throat> I can make it stretch. Now you can't see, but we are measuring the element length. Element length is, if I pull it relatively taut, 123. Don't have to stretch it that much. Don't even have to stretch it 10 inches. Neato. So that, that's one issue I don't have to worry about. So there. Size good. Element probably going to work. Uh, next issue, placement of the grooves. Okay, so here's the grooves. Remember I talked about this? Focus. People rightly reminded me that a lot of the extra space here is for expansion of the elements, but there's not, there's a little bit of expansion width-wise, but the uh, vertical space is ridiculous. So we're going to give it some room to expand, but not so much, because with them crammed together like this, we don't want these little cutouts getting too close to each other and that little bit of fire brick breaking off. Okay, so measuring the elements, the elements have like a, you know, they're a coil. The width of the coil on that element is three eighths of an inch. Exactly. The outer outer sides of it. So I need my groove. Uh, how much will that expand, do you think? Double? Let's say it doubles in size. If it doubles, that puts us up to five eighths. No, six eighths. Three quarters. Math. I can do math. No, I can't. Okay, it's a future. I've done some cutting off camera because you can't hear me talk with my respirator on because uh, and that gets annoying after a while. Uh, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to pause right here and show you the in progress things that I'm doing a little more of the layout uh, so you can get a little more detail. First up, you see a bunch of these already cut. Now these are the, the wall parts. See, it's, it's these parts. The, the three, the two sides and the back, the front, a little more complicated, but we'll get to that. And these are just straight grooves. Now, the, the way I separated everything was by five-eighths of an inch. So, oops, five-eighths from, uh, this is a top, a top brick, so five-eighths from the top to the top of a groove, five-eighths to the bottom of that groove, five-eighths to the top of the next groove, five-eighths to the bottom of the groove, five-eighths, and so on. You end up with one that's six eighths because you have an eighth remainder so three quarter inch and i put that on the bottom of this one and on the bottom bricks i put it on the top and those are marked with the arrows the arrows point to the center sort of uh and in this case this arrow points to the top this arrow points to the center because you know why why make it make total sense uh these are pretty easy to cut the way i'm cutting these i can show you right here you can see the grooves I have the opening at 3 eighths, but the bottom of the groove is 5 eighths down from the top. So I'm cutting one straight and one down. And the reason for that is it's going to sit like this, this particular brick, and I want that element to sit down in the groove. You know, I don't just want it poked in, I want it down. The way I do that, while I'm cutting, just using this standard, uh, I think this is a Home Depot saw, I marked 
five eighths or so up from the the edge of the blade marked with a sharpie then I slapped a piece of uh, duct tape on there as like a depth guide now this is I have not seen this done with a handsaw I'm sure as people have done it I've seen it more done with drill bits tape works for everything so as I'm cutting I'm not cutting right now because I don't have my respirator in when I see the tape line go down to the top of the brick then I know the the depth of cut is correct in this case it's not quite down to the edge there, so if you'll excuse me. There, now it's down to the edge. There's also probably some powder built up in there, keeping the uh, saw from hitting the bottom. While I'm cutting, I line up the blade with my right eye, because in my case, I think I'm right eye dominant, or whatever that's called. Everything seems to, to like line up best with my right, so I just sight down my eye, the blade, and the cut here on the side. And this is a fairly rigid saw, it's got a little flex, but as long as you're careful you can cut a straight plumb line that lines up with the cuts. And I'm pretty successful, I've done it on all of these reasonably well. Brief aside, uh, one way I've heard of determining if you're right or left eye dominant, hold your hands like this, okay? Uh, and look at something through the hole. Okay, both my eyes see the camera. Bring your hand all the way to your face when I bring it to my face so you can see, you can more comfortably see the camera, I go to my right eye. I can go to my left eye and I can see the camera with my left eye, but it's really weird. If I go to my right eye, it's natural. So like whatever eye you would use naturally to look through a telescope that feels most comfortable to you, that's probably your dominant eye. Next thing you notice, I have three cuts here, not two. Why do you need the third cut? Well, this brick is pretty brittle. So let's say you wanted to apply, let's say you just cut the side ones, okay? And you want to remove this center bit. Well, this center bit is connected to the brick through five-eighths of an inch of material right there. But this is also connected to the center part of the brick through five-eighths of an inch of material right there. So those are kind of connected with equal strength. And you don't want equal. I want this cut down the middle, so I have two very, very skinny parts. So this part here is only held on with this little bit of brick and this part here is only held on with this little bit of brick and this big chunky part has a lot of brick holding it on. So what I do in this case, watch this gap. This gap closes to you. The saw's in the middle gap. Now I'm gonna lean the saw towards me gently, boop, and go the other way, boop. And I did this with the full length of the saw right here. Now watch. One part, eh. Another part, eh. Most of a groove. Now it isn't perfect, you still got some junk down there, but I've been using this screwdriver, sticking in the grooves, kind of twisting a bit, even going up against the side and twisting a bit, and it's just kind of cleaning it up. And then once I get a lot of those other larger chunks kind of removed, like so, I can stand the brick up and kind of clean, slowly going down it this way. And that's sort of, and this is pretty soft brick, so as I'm doing this, it's it's basically just kind of just crumbling out all the weak stuff that is barely supported because it's just kind of crumbly. And uh, after I do that a bit, I'm doing it carefully, and I'm doing it with a respirator because you see all this dust. I'm not wearing a respirator right now because I talk, but eventually you end up with like this groove, which is an even depth set back in this direction. <laughs> I'm gonna steal the screwdriver technique, by the way. I would claim it as my own, but this is already on camera. <laughs> hey, it's up to you to put this on YouTube. Hey, that's true. Yeah, you'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of this all by myself. I didn't steal it from Andrew at all. So repeat that a bunch of times. Except you can't, because it gets more complicated with this. This is a corner brick. Those, uh, those grooves don't line up real great. That's not, that's not fantastic. Well, actually the top lines up, the bottom is just, I cut the groove too big. Dude, that, that's fine. Well, that, that's okay. See, the thing is, the groove doesn't go all the way to the back. The groove goes like five-eighths or three-quarters inch past the edge of the thing because I want the element to, to set into this, go in, then turn a corner, and go in this one. So I had to, I had to draw this line, then do my measurements from the top, five-eighths, 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 and the bottom, five-eighths, five-eighths, five-eighths. 5 eighths, 5 eighths. The opening's 3 eighths, just in case you're wondering. This dot indicates the bottom of the groove, so that way it's a smaller opening with a large chamber inside for the element to sit. And there's the three-quarter section in the middle, and I put those two 
butting up together, so I end up with an inch and a half of solid brick dead center. And through that is where I'm going to stick the thermocouple, although not in this brick in particular. Just that makes it easier to see. That line is a like a center point. Now, I can't saw the saw like this, because I don't want to cut through this outer part. So how did I do this, this groove here? Well, I need a way to open up the end. I've been doing that with this nifty tool. It is a drill bit, again, piece of tape for the depth stop, and I just drilled in to there to open it up, and then uh, I sawed to the end of the hole. You see? Now, I did not use a drill. I didn't use a power drill. I just used this bit. I kind of stuck it in the end. This is very soft brick. And then I just sort of twisted. Now, I did this for a few reasons. First off, this brick is softer than you think, and I don't want to just blast a hole right through it when I don't intend to blast through it. Uh, and second, you see how not filling the air with dust this is? It's also very quiet. Yeah, you don't, you don't need the power drill. If you use a power drill or any power tool on this brick, it basically fills the garage with brick dust, and I don't want that. And uh, in the course of these few sentences, I can feel the tape, the depth stop tape, hitting the brick. So honestly, whoops, just took a chunk off. My bad, honestly, finding where the drill is, it's in the basement somewhere, uh, would take longer than just drilling a couple of these out by hand. So that's what I did. And from there you can do your cuts on the side. You know, cut on this side, cut here, holding the brick, or holding the, the saw at an angle, so it lines up with this angle drawn on the edge. Cutting another uh, slot in the middle, and then, you know, pop, pop. Clean out the screwdriver, and there you go. That's how I got this one. Last brick variation, I actually need to do, I actually need to make four of these. You need to make this one, an identical one to this one, then two mirrored ones to this one. So keep that in mind, especially with the, the, the angle that this is and the edge where this is, uh, that, then it actually matters. They can't all just be identical. Here is how I've laid out the most complicated brick. Now the element passes around three times, but it's got to come in, go around, boop, up, go around, come here, boop, up, go around, and then come out. So entry, exit, and uh, little zigzaggies because it's one continuous element per layer of bricks. Two elements, two courses of bricks, you get the idea. The way I did this, uh, or the way I'm going to cut these, again, is pretty obvious with this drill. Drill in there, and in this case, I'm actually going to drill that all the way through because I, I have to poke the element there. This one also all the way through. This little zigzag, I'm going to put the drill here and here at the zigzags. Here, here, here. You can use a saw for the straight bits on the end, saw for this, saw for this, and this, I don't know yet. I really, I might, might just drill a few more holes and then just kind of connect them crappily with a screwdriver? I don't know. I would ask for suggestions, but by the time you're seeing this video, all these bricks are cut. So, yeah, I guess don't look too carefully at those parts as I'm working on it if you don't want to see really, really crummy cut uh, bricks. But to be honest, like, they're bricks, and they sound like bricks, but, like, look at this. You know, I just, I just gouged a quarter of an inch into this thing just with a screwdriver. So it's not, not exactly going to be difficult cutting that out. Just going to be difficult making it look nice. Like these, these look pretty nice. It's, it's not going to look that nice though. That's about all the fancy information I can give you about cutting these element grooves uh, because I'm just winging it for the most part, making it up as I go. As much planning as I did, uh, there's, you know, there's always stuff to figure out. I will tell you this, if you are building a normal kiln, like a pottery kiln, you can often get bricks pre-cut and pre-grooved already. Like for my, my kiln over there, I can just buy those bricks cut perfectly with machines and grooved perfectly and they'll fit perfectly. And the, the one pottery shop nearby just has them, like in the back, ready. Uh, I'm, I'm just doing this because I, I want more power elements closer together, and because I do everything myself, even though it's usually crummier. 
So stay tuned. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Wait, did I tell you where I was going to put the, the thermocouple hole? So here's the face brick with the thing. Remember, three quarters, there's a bigger gap here. There's going to be another one on top, identical, but with the bigger gap on the bottom of that. So the biggest gap's there. I'm just going to drill, like, like probably off-center a little, straight through the middle of the two bricks. So it'll just be, like, maybe a half of a quarter inch diameter hole here, half of a quarter inch diameter hole in the top brick, all the way through. Here is the size of the thermocouple. It's pretty small, and then I'm probably going to insulate the hole, like poke in some of the ceramic wool around it while it's sticking in there. Pretty, pretty big honking thing though. And this, ooh, these are, these are ceramic insulators. Fancy. Also judging from the comments, there's a lot of confusion about what I meant by propane sprayer. I should not have cut that part of the video because I explained it in depth what I was going to be doing. Don't think of it like dumping a bunch of propane into a hot box because that's really not what it is. It's, think of it more like, uh, you know the, the propane burner I use for my foundry furnace? I uh, think that without the forced air and a lot less power and it's running rich. It's not like the, it's not a big honking heat generating burner. It'll generate a bit of heat because it's a burner, but not enough to like really do the job. Uh, just running a little rich to use up the oxygen in the atmosphere. And when you do that in a furnace, uh, it extinguishes the flame inside. So you end up with, uh, you end up with incomplete combustion of the fuel inside. And when that fuel shoots out the hole and my foundry furnace is right on the top, when it shoots out that super hot air with the unburned propane still in it comes up and you'll see a little gap and a flame will start kind of on the top shooting up. So that's basically what's going to happen. Only instead of a hole this big with a flame this big, it's going to be a hole that big and maybe a flame like that. So that whole deal running a little rich scaled way down. And for those of you saying it will damage the elements, yes, yes it will, probably. Uh, in all likelihood, it will shorten the life of the elements, but people do this uh, all the time. It's not, it's not like super common, but people do do it. Like it's not an original idea. So yeah, it'll shorten the life of the elements. Elements are like 40 bucks and it's not gonna shorten them enough that I can't get uh, multiple firings out of it. I'm also not gonna do the propane thing that often probably pretty rarely, and I'm going to be doing heat levels way below the maximum temperature of the canthal elements. So I hope that clears up any confusion. If you have any more questions, leave them below. Next time, uh, the bricks will be cut, and I will be building the enclosure, probably. A steel enclosure, setting them up, and uh, putting in the insulation, the, the, the ceramic wool that I haven't pulled out of the bag yet. Sorry, I just realized this whole spiel didn't have any jokes in it. So, sorry about that. Fun fact, sometimes things aren't fun.